Yo, what's up everybody? It's me, Robert Moraine. Welcome back to What Makes This Dancer Great. Today's dancer is Philip Chabib, aka Pac-Man. We're gonna be reviewing his video called Other Side. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the show everybody. This is the fourth episode of What Makes This Dancer Great and it is by far the biggest thing that I've done on the channel so far. So thank you guys all for the support. If you're new here, please subscribe. There's gonna be plenty of other videos just like this soon to come. So, Philip Pacman Chabib, one of the dancers whose name is synonymous with my own name. Anytime my name gets mentioned, we hear something about Philip Chabib right after, and I'm sure he gets the same questions and same comments all the time. And people saying, oh, I like Philip more, no, I like Robert more. I guess we could both thank reality TV for that, but also thank uh, reality TV for exposing us to the world and getting us started on our careers. Anyways, I'll talk more about us later, but let's get straight into this first video. We're gonna try and skip all the nostalgia here and do the newer stuff because I think that would be more relevant in 2019 rather than going back to 2008 or 2007 where he auditioned on So You Think You Could Dance. I'm sure most dancers and all the people watching this have already seen Philip Chabib's auditions but may not have seen his newer stuff. So this first video called Other Side is a solo video from Philip, which is probably his most recent, I could be wrong, but it's his most recent viral video. So without further ado, let's see what makes this dancer great. Oh girl, this boat is sinking. There's no sea left for me. Starting off with a bang. And how the sky gets heavy. Cuts and threads, you can't complain. Bone break. I love how Philip always dances with emotion and expression. He's really expressive with his dance and his facial features when he dances, and always has been. And obviously, super creative. I was low key jealous of that combination <laughs> when I first saw it. He does a few variations of that, that I love. And obviously he's grown as a dancer since So You Think You Could Dance, where he was mostly just popping back then, but now he's doing it all now. Super clean. Take it to the face, go. Months later, the use went up. And every blunt was accompanied by the pink stuff. But goddamn, love that feeling. Nice. I haven't even Just seen so this video, honestly. That was sick. With the fix, comes with the call. He's all, I mean, one of the best things about Pac Man is that he has like amazing creativity. Get another bottle just to get a couple swallows in it towards the bottom. Couldn't get off. Especially with his duo stuff. But even his solo stuff and his moves, his tricks, they're really creative and original. Again, a really deep emotion and expression in this video. Really good camera work as well. It won't be us. It won't be us. It won't be us. Nah, it won't be Deeper meaning, it's not just a concept video. It's it's, it's over. <laughs> wow, great. I love videos that are actually longer than they feel because obviously when you're having um, a good time, the time flies, right? So damn, Philip Chabib, man. That was an incredible solo piece. I really dug it. I'm not a choreographer, I'm not a hip hop dancer. I can't really like break down exactly what he's doing because I'm not a pro at that, but just through what I know and my experiences as a popper and a bone breaker, I mean, there's no question that he's a serious force in this dance world. There's not many dancer slash choreographer slash poppers to begin with that are on this kind of level. And Philip 
brings it on so many different levels. He's almost like a perfect dancer. I mean, what more do you want from a dancer? I mean, you have the, the expression, he's telling a story, he's dancing many styles, not just one style, so he's well-rounded. What Pac-Man does to, the, to this song and to this kind of music is, is nice, and it makes me appreciate the music a lot more than I normally would. His dancing enhances the music, I guess you could say. And uh, that's always a plus in my book for any dancer. Now, in the next video, I wanted to kind of go over a, a duo video because I think some of his best work is with other dancers. And so just about a week ago, he released a new one minute clip with Liza Riabinina, <laughs> Ria Benina, which I, I didn't have any idea who was before I saw this video. And uh, it's a beautiful piece. Again, just mad shapes, creativity, and threads mixed with bone breaking and tuts. I mean, that's pretty much his, that's his thing, but I mean, it's just, he went so far down the rabbit hole with them all. It just continues all the time, too. I mean, if you watch any of his choreographies, it just, they just keep building concepts on top of concepts on top of concepts. a lot of shit to memorize. <laughs> I'd be lost already. Choreography is not my forte, that's for sure. It's beautiful though. I mean, God, I wish I would, I wish again it was longer. All these are like little teasers almost. A longer video. I know these two were very short for the first two and I, on most of these episodes I kind of improv through them and I want the reactions to be serious. Um, most of the stuff I've seen of Philip Chabib was from Instagram, so I actually never saw the full clips of either of those until now. Okay, so this next video from him is also a duo, and it is um, him featuring Renee Kester, and this video is called Slip. And to be honest, I haven't seen it. It's three years old and it has 16 million views, and I don't know why. Damn, it's over already again. I like these short pieces, actually. So, Philip Chabib, man. Awesome dancer, overall a great dancer. From beginning to end, choreography wise, freestyle wise, I know these were all choreographies that we saw today, but even his freestyling is really good. I've seen him battle in person. He's a top notch popper, as well as he is a top notch choreographer. One of my favorite choreographers, by the way. He's done a lot of work for lots of different artists, lots of different music videos, lots of, he just, he's killing it. And he's been killing it for over 10 years. So that alone is kind of what makes him great. I mean, he's a really celebrated dancer in our generation. And uh, we can't take that away from him, that's for sure. And um, I was, ac I'm actually really proud to be a part of his journey. And uh, I'm proud that he was a part of mine as well because at the end of the day, we both helped each other grow into our careers. And we both were at the very beginning of our career when we met. And it just so happened that by chance, we were both poppers, both on the same show of the same season. And uh, the producers saw something, the producers of So You Think You Can Dance saw something about both of us and thought it would be a good idea to have us battle at the end of the show. But before that, we had no idea who each other were like I never met Pac-Man I didn't even know who he was and I'm sure he didn't know who I was either and so this was really a kind of a surprise way to meet up such a great dancer in my life I mean it's weird how it all happened just a little fun fact because since this series gets watched more than like my question and answers and all the other stuff I put on I'm gonna share with you a lot of questions that I always get asked about Philip Chabib throughout my career because it's like something that gets brought up anytime a fan meets me is like so what about philip shabib how was the battle do you know him do you guys hate each other are you guys friends are you guys gonna work to with each other in the future um so i'm gonna kind of just clear all of that up right now first of all i don't hate philip shabib and he doesn't hate me and we're all we're also not friends like we don't keep in touch really or like message each other we never really work together um and to be honest it's my fault so after claws out 
the rematch that we did after the finale of So You Think You Could Dance Battle. There was a rematch. You can go watch it online if you haven't. It's at Claws Out 3. I think it was 2009. And um, we had like a 10 round battle or something like that. It was an exhibition, so there was no real, nothing really at stake except, I guess, the street cred about who won. But since it was an exhibition, his fans think he won and my fans think I won. But at the end of the day, I kind of, at that time, had a huge ego, like you couldn't imagine. Maybe you, it seemed like I was a humble person um, on TV, but maybe the rest of my personality didn't quite come across on TV. So he came up to me after the battle and like kind of admitted defeat at Claws Out and was like, oh, you know what, I think you took it, and um, but it's all good, I wasn't prepared, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, all right, dude, it's all good. It was fun. And uh, I even told him, I, th I, I recall that I told him like, yeah, and I think I took you on that one too. But maybe I just agreed with him. I'm not sure. Either way, sorry, Philip, for being such an ass about the battle. But I, I did genuinely feel like I won that battle, even if the video footage may not show it. But um, he actually asked after that, I, he told me his story like, oh, he's going to school. Um, he was going to school at the same time doing the dance thing and he just moved, I believe he's from Texas, and he moved to LA to do school, to study. And um, dance just happened to be the thing that he was doing as his passion, as his side or his hobby. And so you think you could dance kind of launched him into a professional career. But um, he wanted to collaborate with me and I, I completely just like turned him down and I, I don't know if I said it to his face like, oh, we shouldn't collaborate, no. I don't think I would have said that. but. At the end of the day, like, I wasn't trying to collaborate with him, so I never hit him up and I never, like, really followed through with that. Yeah, I kind of regret that in retrospect because, yeah, you never know what, what could have become. Maybe I would have learned a little bit more about other styles of dance, maybe this, maybe that, I don't know. But at the end of the day, I was like 18, 19 years old, or 19, 20 years old, and I just really wasn't... Um, it wasn't in my mindset at the time to be collaborating. I was really like on my own journey, doing street performing, about to go on circus tours and like my whole life was about to start and I wasn't really like interested anymore in this whole dance scene that was kind of against me the whole time I was growing up. So I had this kind of thing against the whole popping scene when I was a lot younger and there was like I don't know, man, I was a young dancer and I'm sure a lot of young dancers can feel for me, but I was just lost in my head and I had no idea what I was doing. And the whole So You Think You Can Dance fame thing um, didn't help. So it wasn't until I started touring and traveling and meeting new people and other artists and meeting other cultures and learning about other places that I started to finally actually humble myself and um, learn that uh, I was just a very, small part of a much bigger picture. To be honest, I think Philip, being the great dancer in mind that he is, was already on that level at a very young age. And uh, it was really obvious that he was bound for huge amounts of success. And in a way, I was kind of jealous of him. Even if I took the battle at, on So You Think You Can Dance, and I took the battle in my, in my and his eyes at Claws Out, there was just something about him that was like positive and hopeful and he knew what he was doing and he knew he was on the right track. And um, at the time, I just wasn't on that wavelength at all. And so, I mean, I have the utmost respect for this guy, whether we were rivals or not. And the whole rivalry thing, it's not real, people. I know I said this on the Salah episode, but the whole rivalry between me and Philip Shabib doesn't exist. So if you think he's a better dancer than me, like, cool, because we're completely different dancers. So you can, you're entitled to your opinion, that's cool, but I don't know, I think you're comparing apples to oranges when it comes to me and Philip. We just happen to do the same style of dance. That's it. But even within that genre of dance, like, the styles we do are just so completely different than each other. I guess we meet somewhere at a crossroads with waving and now he's doing a lot of bone breaking but I mean still I wouldn't pit me and him against each other just 
because of So You Think You Can Dance. Uh, reality TV is just not my cup of tea. And uh, if you guys wanted to know why I didn't continue with these kind of TV shows is, and why I quit So You Think You Can Dance, to finally answer that last question that I always get asked, why did you quit So You Think You Can Dance? I know this is an episode about Philip, and I'm sorry for going off on a tangent on myself, but this guy is like an integral part of my career and life. And all of these questions, I always like, it's like somehow attached to Philip Chabib. So I'm gonna just answer them on this episode finally. And if you guys wanna tune out now, please go ahead, but please subscribe. But the reason I quit So You Think You Could Dance was because I don't like reality TV. And when I went on reality TV and I experienced it for myself, I really didn't like reality TV. So, just on so many levels. I mean, I didn't, obviously I didn't want to do the choreography. So that was going to be the reason I quit. And so I didn't want to do the choreography because I'm a realist. I know that I wasn't going to make the show. I wasn't going to make it to the finale. It just wasn't possible. I didn't have the skill set I needed. I had the skill set I needed to do one sick ass audition, which I did. And that was my goal was to get an audition video. And I got that. And then I got a little bit more plus because I quit. Now, if I didn't quit, I would have lost. <laughs> I would have been kicked off the show early and I would have never came back. I would have not made the second audition in Vegas if I had not quit. Now, the thing about after the second audition, because I quit the show, they asked me to come back on on the top 14 to perform again, which I got paid for. And which also got me great exposure once again. I dance to uh, Everybody Dance Now, and then by, by CNC Music Factory. And then at the finale, they asked me to come back and battle Philip. Now, here's a story for everybody that didn't know. This is why I hate reality TV. They asked us to come back and do an exhibition battle for the finale. And I, and I'm, I got paid, I'm pretty sure he got paid for it because it was a, a, a performance on TV. And we, we were supposed to do an exhibition battle. It was gonna be on live on TV and they weren't gonna pick a winner. They were not going to pick a winner. So I was like, cool, it's a win-win situation for both of us. Like no one's gonna lose on national TV and we're both gonna get paid. And we're both not part of the competition. It's like perfect. And this was like perfect in my mind. I quit the show, but I'm back on the finale. And it, it was like, all right, great. This is like the best thing that could ever happen. I'm on the finale anyways, and I didn't even compete. So I was thinking we're gonna do this exhibition, it's gonna be fun and it's gonna be over and we're both gonna go home happy. But no, they turned it into a big dramatic thing and they didn't tell us that they were gonna choose a winner at the end. And that's what they did. So they lied to us, told us there was no winner. And then on live on TV where we can't say shit, they just picked a winner. Like they had the judges judges and me, they don't show us on camera, but me and Philip were looking at each other like, what the f is happening? Like, are they seriously judged? They're, they're picking winners right now. And thank goodness it was me, the winner. I mean, of course, in my opinion, that's awesome. But for Philip, I felt like a piece of It was like, yo, you just lied to f both of our faces and Philip just lost when he thought he wasn't gonna be winning or losing. And me neither, like, we were both just like, what the f and then after the show, we had a big conversation about it and uh, there was no real excuse. They didn't have any explanation for me or him. And um, it just left a really bad taste in my mouth for reality TV. And I was actually really skeptical about going on Superstars of Dance after that and anything else. And Superstars of Dance was a sham as well. So, I mean, I know that this, these, Shows are great for exposure and great for up and coming dancers. Like, I don't want to sound like I'm just shitting on So You Think You Could Dance because obviously it brought me to where I am today. I wouldn't be traveling the world doing what I love if it wasn't for that show. And I'm sure Philip Chabib could say the same thing and hundreds of other dancers can say the same. But at the same time, there is a sense of like, you're selling out because you're going on reality TV, or at least I had that sense. And I think it's an important thing to keep your, your values, keep them for yourself and never uh, let 
any kind of exposure or money um, take advantage of you or let you change your mind or replace the values that you had. Something that I did have since I was really young. I mean, I may have been kind of socially awkward and stupid at the time, but I always had a sense of like what I believed in. And I always thought reality TV was kind of a sham. And when I went there, I felt the same thing and I didn't really want to be a part of it anymore. Like, I felt like I got what I needed and I was like, okay, I should leave before it becomes ugly and before it starts to not be okay or I guess, I'm kind of jumbling my words up here, but it's not an easy subject to talk about. It was like a life-changing event for me and for Philip. So it's just a huge rush of emotions whenever I talk about So You Think You Could Dance and that whole experience. So I think you guys kind of get the idea of where I'm at with this and where I'm at with Philip Shabib as well. Like our relationship kind of ended around the time of So You Think You Can Dance and from then till now, like we haven't really talked. And I thought it was a really good idea to put him on this show because honestly, from almost all the dancers I knew back then, he's really at the top. I mean, Pac-Man's killing it, like on so many levels. And there's so many things that I wanna borrow from him that I just can't do, but it just shows you like the amount of inspiration that he brings to other dancers is incredible. And I know a lot of other poppers that are really high level that also agree that Philip Chabib is one of the best choreographers of, of our time. So that being said, I think I've covered enough about this guy and enough about our relationship and enough about his dancing and his personality and genius. And I'm sure most of you guys agree with me. I know most of my fans are also fans of Philip, and, uh, and I'm a fan as well, whether you believe me or not. I truly am a fan of Philip and, um, and his work. So I guess that covers what makes him great. And uh, if you guys enjoyed this episode or you found it entertaining or emotionally disturbing <laughs> or, or anything like that, please give me a subscribe, give me a like, hit the bell button next to the subscribe button. It will notify you whenever I upload anything new, which I will be doing more often. Sorry about the wait. And so until next time, peace out.